and you know it works pretty easy. Is it necessary? No. I think you're far better off doing the jig grind. I don't think you'll notice the difference. If you get into bowl turning, when I when I rough out bowls, I may rough out 25, 35 in a day, and I've got a pile of shavings that high. Um, I don't want to waste time, so I'll do something like that. But I don't think anybody here does that, so you don't need to worry about it. Just that's the way it's done. But for the average person, what you've got to do is you're going to use the jig. And there's something that just came out on the market which I find really interesting. I was just at a craft supply a couple of weeks ago, and they wound up giving me this to try. Has anybody seen this, the Raptor? Uh, anybody here have it? Does it work? I'm going to show you why it doesn't. It's kind of interesting. It's got some nice features. Like, for instance, if I wanted to set the, the wheel, I mean the table, at 40 degrees, what I can do is set a little flat spot. You put it on here, and you bring the wheels together. You bring these two points on the wheel together, lock it down, and I know that table is set at 40 degrees. It works fine for that. But to use it for what it's really intended for, does not work, and I'll show you why. You have to take the Veragrind attachment, and you have to set it at 23 degrees. In other words, when a tool is in here, it has to come back to 23 degrees. Okay? So that's the setting you have to do. Then what you do is, let's just say we're going to make it 45 degrees, because that's what we want. We take this, we put this long edge into the V-block, and when both of these points line up on the wheel, we're supposedly set up at 40 degrees. That sounds nice. You know, it's a real quick setup. Works real good. Here's the problem. These two tools were set up basically one using that setup and one using a traditional setup. Okay? The problem is there's no variation with the side cheeks. Okay? As I said to you earlier, that leg brings it in so that these side cheeks roll in. You don't want vertical cheeks on the side. Okay? This is a typical grind. Can you see these cheeks, how they come in? I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I don't know, does that make any difference? You just back a just roll, gray. It, roll it slowly and it flashes. There you go. Okay. First of all, you can see the size of the cheek. You can see it comes up on an angle. But you can also see that it rolls in, and it rolls in 16 degrees different than the front angle. Okay? Well, using their method, this is the same tool, same profile, same angle. Look how vertical these cheeks are. There's no angle at all. And you, you can see the size of these side cheeks. Okay? They don't work. Now... Can you put them side by side? Sure. <coughs> and over the gray. Is that better? Yeah. Can you see the difference? How vertical the one on my left is, be your right, and how the one on my right, your left, actually the, the cheeks come in? Okay. That's the way they're supposed to be. The one on the left is kind of a tricky tool to use because you stand a good chance of getting a catch on the inside of a bowl. So that's, that's kind of a problem. Now, you can change that. And the way you change that is you get away from their setup. And instead of having this at 23 degrees, you make a change. The problem is, it'll only work for that one setting. So if you're only going to do 40 degree bowls, uh, gouges, or 45, or 50, or whatever it's going to be, you've taken the usefulness of this and thrown it out the window. Because nothing else changed except that side angle, because they have it set at this 23 degree setting. So it's, it's something to think about. You may be able to get it to work for you, but to get all these different angles, it just isn't going to work. Not at 23 degrees. Not if you don't like that style gouge, and I don't. You're saying the Raptor is designed for the 23 inch. Yeah, the instructions tell you. Matter of fact, Kirk Deer must have designed that. No, actually, he didn't. No. On this? Yeah. Not on. Not on this. He didn't. Not for this setup. He wrote an article. Wrote an article. And he put 23 on there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, five years ago. If you've got 23 degrees, okay. And you keep changing that for the different angles. The side never changes. And don't forget, there's 16 degrees difference. So basically, you're not changing that, that angle in the back. You've got those vertical cheeks. You're always going to have them. And as I said, you can change that to get rid of it. But basically, that's what you get when you use their setup. And to me, that's unacceptable. You know, they've already got the setting they want you to set this at. Okay? 
And then you're using the raptor to set the distance that it's out. Remember I told you the distance sets the front angle. This sets the side angle. So basically, if you use their setup, which I did, I get an unacceptable grind. To me, that's completely unacceptable. So basically, um, that's one of the tools that I feel, uh, though it, you could make modifications to it, if you're going to make the modifications, what did you need it for in the first place? Um, to do the same thing, basically, you can take a wooden stick, you know, just a piece of wood, and set the distance and set it that way every time uh, for the drawing that you know works. So you don't really need to buy something like this. Explain again why this is unacceptable. Okay, let me just show you another gouge. You see the difference in the cheeks? When I take this tool with these vertical cheeks that are very straight up and down and I go inside of a bowl, I cannot roll this tool in order to get a nice sheer cut on the inside because these cheeks are vertical. Instead of being turned in, they're vertical. So in order for me to get a cut, I've got to turn this tool straight up and down. Anybody knows what happens if you put a tool straight up and down inside of a bowl? It's a catch. So that's why it won't work. That's why I find that completely unacceptable. I just played with this. I only brought this back a couple weeks ago, and I just played with it a couple days ago to see if it was going to work. And uh, in my opinion, um, it has some use. They're only about seven bucks a piece, but um, I don't think it really works for what it was designed for to me, to, you know, to my specifications. The way I would show up in a ball gouge, uh, oh, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the angles. We have two angles on here. We've got the front angle and the top angle. Okay, we all understand where that comes from. That when you buy a tool, that top angle usually is flat. Especially if you buy like Crown, um, Henry Taylor, those are all pretty straight and flat across the front. You have to grind the wings off. If you don't grind the wings off, you will have a catch when you put it inside of a bowl. It's just so gonna it's happen. It's looking like a spin rubber gap, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, almost like this without, without the piece extending in the bottom. So it's almost flat, okay? I want to compare it to Thank you. Okay. So basically, when you get the tool, you've got to sharpen it. You've got to sharpen it in order to be useful. Because you're not going to put it inside of a bowl with a bowl spinning and run the risk of having a catch. But a lot of people don't realize those combined angles have to be less than 90 degrees. If they're more than 90 degrees, the tool will not cut. It won't cut at all. You can do all you want with it. You can poke it in. You can do whatever you want. It won't cut. Because if, if it's bigger than 90 degrees, the cutting edge is actually not a cutting edge. It's actually an obtuse angle, and it won't cut. So by, by, grinding, by grinding that surface down for the length of the, uh, it's easier if I show you. I've decided how long I want this grind to be. And that's something I decided when I picked up the tool. So what I do is I lay it over on, I use 40 degrees. I've got a grinder in my shop that's set up at 40 degrees all the time to grind that one that is set at 40 degrees. So I'll lay the tool flat on there, get it up on the wheel, and grind that surface back 40 degrees. Combined with any angle that I use, it's, it's gonna be uh, less than 90 degrees. If it's not, then I grind a little bit further. But generally, I use 40 to 45 degrees. I have one tool that's 60, so that's ground a little different. But all my tools are in the 40 to 45 range. So 45, and 40 is 85, so I'm within that 90 degree range, so it's fine. So I'll grind that back by putting it up on top of the, uh, the grinder. Then what I'll do is I'll put this into the very grind attachment. By the way, this is an interesting attachment here. When I first got this, so this is an old one. They're very, very different now. When I first got this, I set it up where I had my bowl gouges set down here and my spindle gouges up here, and I marked it. Well, I used that for a while, and then I said, you know, I can make this a little bit better. So I moved it, and I marked it again. And then I moved it, and I marked it again. And then I moved it, and I said, boy, that's, that's it. So I drilled a hole. Well, I don't know if we can see. Yeah, yeah. You can't see through the hole because I moved it again. Yeah. No, it's not. Not at all. And actually, what I did was I was able to find a way. It took me a couple of years to do this, but I found a way that I can sharpen all of my tools except for one with one setting. I've got to move it in and out, but this leg never changes. And I've got four grinders in my shop. Each one has one set exactly the same way. So anywhere in the shop, you can sharpen a tool using the same setting. And it works real well. What's the difference between that and the one 
pull out of the box. Is that the same tool? Or just different? Yeah, this just happens to be a new one. You know, I sell these, so this just happens to be a new one that I took just to show. Um, it's set at 23 degrees. I'm not going to use it, so. I'm just going to put it back in stock, and but it's the same thing. If if you look, because I said this is an old one, okay. The um, the way this is cut for some oddball reason. Anybody buy one of these lately? Uh, okay. There's two things wrong with the way they are now. There's always a bit of slag here from the weld. You got to grind that flat. If you don't, you can't use it up against something to, to check your what they call stick out. The other thing is the way this end of the leg is cut. If you put it into the V block and rotate it, it walks. So you've got to round this a little bit. The old ones you didn't have to do that with. This uh, stick, uh, stick fast, hold fast, they came out with this design where it replaces the spring with a bearing and it works real well. Now one way has the same thing. It's kind of interesting. They came out with a replacement knob that was brass and then one way came out with it. Well then they came out with the bearing, now they've got it. So, But basically it's the same thing, it's just a newer manufacturer. Yes. I still made it in a 23 degree angle. The reason I ask is because that thing has a, another angle on it itself. Because this, this leg right here is not flat. So between here and here is different. If you run this line right here out here, it comes out about right here. Okay, what they tell you to do is they tell you to take a piece of paper and draw an angle, 23 degrees. I don't know, pencil. Anyway, you tell you to draw that. So, basically what this is, if you look at the center of this bar and the bottom of the tool, which is what they tell you, is 23 degrees. Okay? That's your 23 degrees right there. Is that what you were talking about? Well, the they did they tell you how to do it. They tell you to draw a line. If you run this out right here, this is not, this is not flat. From here to here is not flat. So if you just go from here to here, you get a different angle than if you go from here to here. See what I mean? Yeah. So the question is, where's the 23 degrees? Is it from here to here, no. the surface, or is it from here to here? Pivot point to the or, or from the pivot point to the, uh, it's, it's really this angle from here, from the center. The center line of that here. pivot to here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. They actually tell you to draw out a piece of paper and lay it under there and move it. And they use the tool in there and they show you how to lay it out. And that's, that's basically what's done. Um, so what I do is, um, let me get rid of this. I don't want to use this. I've got this set for my angle that I use. Now, they call this portion right here stick out. Okay, and they vary depending on the jig that you use. For this Raptor, they want two inches. They tell you in the instructions anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches, inch and three quarter is best, but it should be consistent, and that's the whole point. If that stick out varies, then it's not gonna be the same angle that's actually ground on it. So each time you sharpen the tool, you're gonna grind it back further. So, um, one of the things that you do is you make a wood block, and you drill a hole inside the block, and you bottom it out, you bottom the tool out, and then you can take the, uh, the jig, slide it forward, so the tool is bottomed out in the hole, and the face of the jig is against the face of the wood. You tighten it down. Now, a lot of people have, they don't have big hands like I do, so they can't, they can't do it the way I did, so I just tell them, lay it up like this, let the tool, let gravity pull the tool down, tighten it up, and you have the same stick out. Now, another thing that I found out early on was, don't grind this out along the end grain. Anybody want to guess why? You beat it down real quick. So I found out a nice hard piece of... Uh